Don't worry guys, I'm helping. <laughs> oh yes. Wonderful. And elven bow. Mmm. And it does fetch a pretty penny as well. Suppose I shall take it. These gauntlets are uh, not quite my thing. But again, uh, if you want to take some of that, fighter, you're more than welcome to it. Ah, wonderful exploits, friends. I do hope that you have enjoyed. Oh, and more. Hello, hello, goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> Did we miss them before? Is this another section of the cave that I had not seen previously? Hmm. Should have a look. Ah, not much at all. Well, thank you anyways. I do enjoy having a look. Oh, there is more. More to it, friends. A fire. Somebody's been here. And, uh, a tiny collection of gold. I don't think the bandit life is worth it. Living out outside of society. Can anyone really say that uh, it has turned out well for them? That they've made the riches that they desired? Surely not. You must live somewhat within the law. Randar tries to ride a fine line. <laughs> There's nothing up this way. Giant limestone caverns. I suppose we should try the other wing. These caves, all carved out by underground rivers. So it's hard to say which way is the correct way. Ah, uh, this is a trap to be sure. Please don't, don't activate. Oh, okay. That's fine. We're doing great. I don't like it. Please, no more logs. And I missed. Don't worry, guys. I'm helping. <laughs> yes, Brandar, expert in combat. You will learn to fear him. You guys did quite a good job. I'll just uh, do the thiefing job and open this chest. Oh yeah, it was totally locked. I take a cut of what's inside because it's locked. That's only fair, don't you think? I think so too. Could get some more, some more mushrooms, alchemical ingredients. Hmm. <laughs> I smell them, friends. Just down this way. Just try and be quiet. Oh my. Terrifying. Looks like a warrior and a mage. You must back out of here, Brother Martin. Joffrey, when did you arrive, friend? No matter. I'm sure he's even better than the uh, Dragonborn Knight. Anything out there? There's one. Easy, boy, easy. Oh my. Perhaps I should get the uh, short sword of burning. That might be the right answer to this. Ah. Quite good. Chop this warlord up. Oh my. Joffrey is unconscious. Oh, and now the zombie is coming for me. Oh, Brother Martin, please be okay. Ah, he's following. Ah! Let the warlord! Ah! Ah! Oh. He swings with such fury! Oh. Please get him, Brother Martin! Oh. Ah. Ah. I need something, something to help me. Oh my goodness. A little more healing. 
No, no, no. Must go over here. Little healing. Insulation. Hmm. And grounding. Yes, I think this will do fine. I'm sorry, Brother Joffrey. I don't mean to leave you. Oh, there you are. Ah, I guess we are all safe for now. My goodness. Another potion of insulation to replace the one that I, uh mistakenly used the warlord hmm, nothing upon his body oh quite a fight I think it was the right thing to back down into that hall sometimes giving up some ground is the right answer it would have been a nice choke point but not what I wanted to do indeed not well, a couple of chests here. I always like the chests. The mysteries inside. Oh yes. Very hard. Oh, broke a few picks on that one. And it seems we're going to get shocked by this chest. So, uh, prepare for that. Ow. me with no health. Thank you so much. Let's all have a rest around the campfire. I think that would be a nice thing now that the uh, the threat has been cleared from the way. So Brandar will heal and I'll tell you a short story. Let me tell you a story friends that comes from Valenwood. Those interesting Bosmer always out and about let me tell you. Well, how did it, how did Brandar find out that they were not allowed to eat plants? How did that come to pass? Well, I will tell you, friends. It is as such. A little girl comes into her oak home. She says, Grandpa, why can't we eat berries? The little wood elf, barely a sapling yet, looked at her grandfather inquisitively, while the rest of her family kept eating the large roast, the great beast of some sort that was spread across the table. He took his granddaughter aside for a moment. Why do you ask, he says. Well, when we visited Elden Root last week, one of the tall yellow boys told me that berries are delicious. Do not listen to them. Those yellow elves are Altmer, and they're fools. They're fools because they don't listen to Yifri. They have even convinced some of our own to stop listening to Yifri. Grandpa, who's Yifri? And the little elf asked. Well, my little flower. In the beginning, before the oldest tree in the green was but a sapling, before the mountains were raised, and even before your grandmother was born. I heard that, his wife said from her seat at the table. Grandpa chuckled to himself. Anyways, a long time ago, there were no elves and no trees. Only the ooze. The ooze was like this piece of fat here. Grandpa took a slice from the roast, pulled it, and changed its shape. See, he said, it was just like this, changing constantly. Icky, the little girl squealed. Exactly. And you know who else thought it was Icky? Yifri. In fact, he thought it was so Icky that he decided to put a stop to it. He made some of the ooze into the green in the forest that we are in right now. The rest of the ooze he used to make the Bosmer, people like you and me, and your mommy and daddy. He told the Bosmer that they could live in paradise in the green, but on one condition. We are forbidden from hurting the forest. You see, that's why we can't eat berries or chop down trees or pull up flowers. Because if we did, we wouldn't be able to have the great life in the forest like we have right now. Thanks, Grandpa. Hold on, little one. I'm not done with the story yet. When Yifri made the Bosmer, he did make a mistake. A few Bosmer were a bit too tall and a bit too yellow, which made them very mean and angry. He called them the Altmer. And because they're so mean, they're not allowed in the forest. You mean like the boys who told me about the berries? Yes, just like him, honey. The Altmer are very bad, so don't listen to them. If you ever see any of them near our oak home, tell your mom and dad, and they'll take care of it. Okay, thank you, Grandpa. Anytime, my little sapling. Speaking of Altmer, he said under his breath, your dinner's getting cold. Better keep eating. 
Ah, quite hilarious, as you might imagine, friends. Uh, a bit of racial tension between the elves, as I may have mentioned before. But, of course, the Bosmer are my favorite... I, I put small quotations around that. Favorite elves. <laughs> uh, just simply because of their uh, their closeness to Valenwood and uh, their disdain of the swamp. The forest can be a little too wet as well, but... It's hard to touch Morrowind on that front, friends. Anyways, let us carry on. Here's another story that I did hear briefly. It is about uh, an orc named Tazgol. Apparently, orcs do go on vision quests or some such in order to find themselves in the wilderness. And this is how it goes. When Tazgol Brobetnir was not yet of his third battle, he climbed the cliffs of Betnik until he was so high he could look beyond the sea to the edge of the world. He took neither food nor water, but drank the rainwater that collected in the crevices of the rocks, and ate eggs from the nests of birds high on the cliff. He climbed three days, and when he reached the top he rested three days. It was then that Moloch gave him the following vision. He saw a single great serpent cut into three, and from the three pieces sprang three smaller serpents. The three serpents divided the world between them. One crawled on its belly and said, I claim the land, and all that grows on it. Another swam to the depths and said, I claim the water, and all that drinks it. A third took to wing and said, I claim the air, and all that breathes it. No sooner had they done so, than the serpents fell into conflict. For what is there that lives that does not spring from the earth, or drink water, or breathe air? And so each serpent thought that he had dominion over the others. In time, the serpents fought each other, and all were destroyed. Tezgal was perplexed by what he had seen, and he returned from the cliffs and told Thurgur the Wise what Moloch had shown him. Thurgur the Wise, who had interpreted many visions, said, That is a vision with two lessons. The first is that division without unity is fatal. Tazgol asked, but how can there be division with... How can there be both division and unity? Naive question, the wise woman barked back. Don't the chief's three wives hate each other and yet love the chief, and so share the same desire? Is there not division when a young orc challenges the chief, and unity when the new chief is proclaimed triumphant? Just so, the three serpents were destroyed when they forgot that they were not three serpents, but one serpent divided. And how do we maintain both unity, division, and unity? The young warrior wondered. The wise woman chuckled. That is the second lesson of your vision. Remember the past. Yes, Brandar has done much of this. I think it's quite applicable to the trials that I have gone through, friends. I am many things still, but I am also still the same person that I was in the past. <sighs> this story still rose around my head. I don't know what to make of it quite yet. Are you guys even paying attention anymore? Fine. Brandar's done with story time. But it was nice to rest up just a little bit. Enjoy some of the uh, spoils of the wizard's cave. Ah, Brandar does love a catnap, as one might have already guessed. Hmm. A little more acrobatic skill. I do feel that in my legs. Hmm. Stronger, stretchier, more productive. Like a swine in a cage. On antibiotics. <laughs> Does that make sense? Doesn't matter. Now we are free. Free as a bird. And it seems even though Brother Martin and Joffrey declined to ride on Richard. It's ah, my pleasure. Yes, yes. Continue following me. I'm so unsure how we lost each other, friend. Oh my. Bandits. Bandits! Please leave. Please leave me. 
See, see, they just come Die, in girl. all of a sudden. Please don't hurt me. Are you are you serious right now? You can't be serious right now. I do like that war axe of sparks. Is this my is this my horse? Wayne and Priory horse. Brother Martin, please! Please why? No 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 no! Oh oh oh. A little dissension in the ranks. Horse, please get out of that door. You can't even go in there. You're a horse. Ah. Speaking of horse, where did the uh, mine run off to? Stop! Oh, you oh. violated the law. Pay the court a fine or serve your sentence. Your stolen goods are now forfeit. What are you talking about, sir? I've, I've paid. I've broken the law. You, you may have some gold Here's if you wish. Here's the procedure. We go to the castle. First, we search you, confiscate any stolen goods, oh, then you really? pay your fine, and we release you. I don't want to. Well, Brother Martin, that was unpleasant. They uh, searched every single part of me that could be imagined, and I am I'm feeling violated at the moment. I'm unsure even of what the uh, the fine was. Being a foreigner in this land, I think that is the the only answer. I'm shocked. I'm appalled. We must we must make way to to Bruma as quickly as possible. It has become quite clear that this is uh, no longer a place for me. I did have a nice stay here, just just a week or so ago. Maybe it's been a fortnight now. It's hard to keep track of time. Especially when I was in the Oblivion Plain. It was always daytime. Always hot as ever. Get on your horse. I will uh, find mine around here somewhere. Where has he gone? Richard? 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 None of these are my horse. Why? Could I just borrow one of these horses? Where is my Richard? Oh no. My Richard is gone. Maybe if I have a look at the map, I can remember where we, where we last were. Where's my Richard? I could buy another horse, but how to replace my Richard? Hi there. I run Hello. the North Country Stables. Are you interested in a horse? Perhaps so. There are no finer chestnut horses to be found anywhere in Cyrodiil. They are not as hardy as most, but only the black horse is faster. <sighs> I've changed my what mind. What a pity. If you change your mind, we have a fine selection of chestnut horses. I had a wonderful paint horse. Bye. His name was Richard. But he's been lost to me. What a shame. Well, onward towards Bruma. Let us let these gentlemen be on their way as soon as possible. And so, I found Richard behind a bush. Look at this little boy. He just wanders away. He's so silly. Richard, please. Please, Richard. Come back to daddy. Richard! Don't make me come down there, Richard! Richard! I'll count to three! One, two, three! Richard! God damn it! <laughs> oh, be careful! Oh, yeah, it's a steep mountain. Jeez. Well, Richard and I made it down, okay? My friend! Where are you going? You want to run away from daddy? Is that it? Hmm. <sighs> well, we are quite quite close to Cloud Ruler Temple now. Perhaps Richard did know the direction that we were going and simply wished to play a little prank. Not much of interest happened along the way, to be quite honest. 
but we were almost at the top. And now see what you've done, Richard. That's very bad. That's a naughty, naughty boy. We're, we're very upset with you. Now I must go back up. Here we are. Back to the start. And Brother Martin has quite some athletic ability. I must say I'm quite impressed with this fellow. Joffrey and I decide to ride Beasts of Burden. Martin runs. Perhaps because he is a monk? Does he so revere life that he would not uh, put a horse under himself? Richard likes it. I swear it. He knows it's good for him. He gets out into the wild. Sometimes he does uh, pull towards back home. I don't think he fully realizes yet that uh, we won't be going back there anytime soon. But I won't tell him that. A bit of thistle. But there is nothing there. And I think I've stung my paw as well. Hmm. Brother Martin, are you here? Oh. Oh my. Yes, Cyrus. This is the Emperor's son, Martin Seppi. Mm. My lord. Richard wants to, to be included. <laughs> we have not had the honor of an Emperor's visit in many years. Yes? Ah, well, thank you. Yes. The honor is mine. Come. Your blades are waiting to greet you. How do I go about getting the Amulet of Kings? Is this necessary? I want to make sure that this Emperor gets fully installed, don't you understand? Hmm. Quite a lovely place. A small army to defend it. times are upon us. The Emperor and his sons were slain on our watch. The Empire is in chaos. But there is yet hope. Here is Martin Septim, true son of Uriel Septim. Hail, hail Dragonborn! Dragonborn. Hail, 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 Martin Martin Septim. Septim. hail! 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 Your Highness, the blades are at your command. You will be safe here until you can take up your throne. Joffrey, all of you, I know you all expect me to be Emperor. I'll do my best. But this is all new to me. I'm not used to giving speeches, but I, I wanted you to know that I appreciate your welcome here. I hope I prove myself worthy of your loyalty in the coming days. That's it. Thank you. Yeah. Well then, thank you, Martin. We'd all best get back to our duties, eh, Captain? Well said, Martin. Not much of a speech, was it? Didn't seem to bother them, though. The blade saluting me and hailing me as Martin Septim. I don't mean to sound ungrateful. I know I would be dead by now if it weren't for you. Thank you. But everyone expects me to suddenly know what to do, how to behave. They want an emperor to tell them what to do. And I haven't the faintest idea. You will come into your own, Brother Martin. I assure you that much. It is partially my fault that the Emperor was killed, so this is my way of repaying my debt to society, as it were. And I do thank you for giving up your life as a priest and coming back with me. That took a lot. You are a man of God, and I'm sure that he will give you the right words to say in the moment. Perhaps you should pray to Talos for wisdom. But... On to other matters, we need to get that amulet back, so that you can take up the throne. And I can be on my way. Do you have any idea where it is? Maybe some spiritual link? Is that a thing? Of course. The amulet of kings. So we, I, can take it to the Temple of the One and light the dragon fires. And stop the Oblivion invasion. And you will be the Emperor afterwards, yes? The Emperor? <laughs> That's an idea that will take some getting used to. In any case, we need the amulet first. Maybe Joffrey will know where to start. 
Joffrey. Always with the Joffrey. Well, I thank you, Brother Martin. Don't worry about me, my friend. I know I'm in good hands here. Yes, quite. Little army. They are quite mighty. Joffrey, we need you to get You have proven this yourself a loyal servant of the Empire, as worthy as any of the Blades to stand by Martin's side during this crisis. As the Grand Master of the Blades, I would be honored to accept you into our order. Will you join us? I cannot at the moment, my friend. I'm sorry. Very well. Many serve the Empire in their own way. But we would be honored to have you if you change your mind. Quite. Do you know where the Amulet of Kings might have gone? You're right. We must try to recover the amulet before the enemy takes it out of our reach. You should go back to the Imperial City. Boris may have learned something about the assassins. You'll find Boris at Luther Broad's boarding house in the Elven Gardens district of the Imperial City. Hmm. So it is back to the Imperial City. Give my warm regards to Boris. Tell him he should not blame himself for the Emperor's death. Hey, he did well to send you to me. Hmm. Indeed. Boris. Ah, there you I suppose I should have heard this name. People are speaking as if I should. But uh, I don't recall it. Which is strange, because Brandar is relatively good with names. One, two, three, four. Goodbye, goodbye, see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you. My friends